with the world moving towards the next generation of computer hardware, the software side of things still has a lot left to be discovered. With the majority of laptops coming with Windows pre-installed, many users are devoid of the Linux operating system experience, which is more resource friendly than the mainstream operating systems. It can be attributed to the difficulty people used to face when installing a new operating system like Linux in the old days. However, a lot of these issues are fixed nowadays thanks to the big names like Debian and Ubuntu who have been instrumental in making Linux-based operating systems as user-friendly as possible. But which one of them is better for you? Let's take a look at the topics to be covered today as we answer this question for you. We start by learning about the operating systems from a layman's perspective and uncovering the basic offerings of both entities. Next, we cover the unique features of both Ubuntu and Debian and how they stack up against each other and other industry counterparts. Moving on, we take a look at some pointers before installing each of these operating systems and the respective download links. Finally, we compare the contrasting features of both Ubuntu and Debian and infer the kind of users each OS caters to. So let's start by learning about Ubuntu and Debian in general. Ubuntu is an open source, free Linux distribution. It is an operating system for cloud computing in accordance with support with OpenStack. Ubuntu is developed by the Canonical community and it is freely available. Also, Canonical Limited is responsible for the funding of Ubuntu. Basically, Ubuntu is released every six months. Free support is available for 9 months after every release and long-term support, which are the LTS, is released every 2 years. The first release of Ubuntu was in October 2004. You must have heard about Ubuntu no matter what. It is the most popular Linux distribution overall, not just limited to servers, but also the most popular choice for Linux desktops. It's easy to use, offers a good experience, and comes pre-installed with essential tools to get a head start. Of course, Ubuntu managed to simplify the Linux experience years back and that is the reason why it is still so popular even with several impressive Linux distributions available right now. Every new release is more polished and comes loaded with new features and improvements. Thanks to its huge user base, a number of software vendors have made their applications compatible with Ubuntu. While the catalog may not be as extensive as Windows, the options are still well curated. More importantly, the advantage of Linux-based operating systems is the ability to use free and open source alternatives to major proprietary software. By lacking some polish and overall feature set, most alternatives are enough to get the job done for majority of the users. The never-ending community support also helps in troubleshooting should things go wrong at any point in time. The default desktop environment in Ubuntu is GNOME or a Unity. The Unity is a modern desktop environment with a powerful search tool for finding all your applications and documents with its base setup as GNOME. It integrates well with common applications such as audio players, video players and social media. There are a few other desktop environments for Ubuntu as well with Unity as its flagship environment. Debian on the other hand is a free operating system for your computer which started in 1996 and is maintained by global contributors. If the operating system, a set of basic programs and utilities that make your computer run, its core is the kernel. The kernel is the most fundamental program on the computer. Debian uses the Linux kernel, a completely free piece of software which was started by Linus Torvalds and supported by thousands of programmers worldwide. A large part of the basic tools that fill out the operating system come from the GNU project and those tools are free as well. Debian is the mother of Linux distributions. Beginners always wonder why this not so good looking distro is so popular inside the Linux developers community, especially when there are a lot of modern distributions that are easy to use and have beautiful UI. Later on, they found out the power of Debian after using a bunch of distributions from other developers. You will be surprised to know that almost all other popular consumer level distros are based on Debian, even Ubuntu. It is so stable and feature rich that the developers find it easy to build their distros based on Debian rather than building it from scratch. Debian is run and maintained on its GitHub repository thanks to contributions from developers worldwide. The major decisions are taken up on the repository issues tab, leading to community-wide feedback and a holistic approach to open source development of the Debian operating system. 
Thanks to this variety of personnel, the source code of Debian comprises around 70 different programming and scripting languages. Debian supports all kinds of graphical environments, ranging from full-featured desktop environments to lighter alternatives and even minimalist window managers. Ubuntu ships with Unity Desktop by default, but the package manager can install the GNOME environment if needed, while also including Cinnamon, LDXD, XFC, KDE, and Mate. On the other hand, Debian gives you the choice of choosing which desktop environment you want from the get-go by providing ISO files for each desktop environment individually. Now that we understand where both these operating systems stand, let us take a look at some of the best features offered by each of these distributions. Ubuntu is the closest thing to a household name among desktop Linux distributions. It is a great distribution to start with and it's even a great distribution to keep using after you're more experienced if you're happy with it. It is user-friendly in a lot of ways. It provides a simple desktop, has an easy installer and provides a checkbox during the installation process that will automatically install Flash plugins and various codecs that you will need for multimedia support. There's an additional drivers tool that will detect closed source or proprietary drivers that might be necessary to get all your hardware working and easily install them for you. Ubuntu is produced by Canonical and their friends. It is run as an open project to enable others with diverse ideas to benefit from all the work the developers do to deliver the world's best open platform. Still, Canonical is responsible for delivering six monthly milestone releases and regular LTS releases for enterprise production use. Enterprises can count on Canonical to support, secure and manage Ubuntu infrastructure and devices. With more than 500 employees in over 39 countries, the company underpins the critical infrastructure for thousands of businesses and millions of Ubuntu users around the world. Unity Desktop was originally developed by Canonical and introduced earlier for netbook computers with Ubuntu 10.10. .10. Then it went on to be the default desktop environment for Ubuntu. Eventually, it has been dropped by Canonical and replaced by GNOME. However, it has made a comeback after Ubuntu 18.04. While being completely stable, the HUD and global menu hold up just fine with major applications such as LibreOffice, Thunderbird and other web browsers. That means that the Unity desktop works as it is supposed to while making you more productive. While some desktop environments have a steep learning curve, Unity is very intuitive for new users in spite of deviating from the traditional start menu format that the Windows users are generally accustomed to. The Calamaris installer is a framework. By design, it is very customizable in order to satisfy a wide variety of needs and use cases. Calamaris aims to be easy, usable, beautiful, pragmatic, and more importantly, distribution agnostic. Calamaris includes an advanced partitioning feature as well, with support for both manual and automated partitioning operations. It is the first installer with an automated replace partition option, which makes it easy to reuse a partition over and over for distribution testing. Coming to Debian, it is a community distribution through and through. It's governed by a board of elected developers. It has its own internal structure and laws, and just about everyone working on it is a volunteer, making it completely community-driven. It is maintained and developed by programmers and developers all around the world. This form of development ensures continuity. If one of the developers decides to stop working on the project, another developer might come in and take place and keep the project going on. It is completely free of centralized control and this is also one of the reasons for an undecided stable release cycle. Debian SID is the permanently unstable development version of Debian. It is where the latest versions of programs are being considered for inclusion in the Debian release cycle are uploaded and tested. Because it has no official install media and the few netboot images that are built often don't work, even people who are willing to risk using a development version may have trouble installing it. However, it still remains the best place to test new features that have not yet made their way onto the stable branch. Debian has only free and open source software in its repositories. This is mostly ample for our users. Except for users who use hardware that only has proprietary drivers, these repositories work well in most cases. It is possible to add other repos as well that have proprietary software if that is the requirement. 
Debian standard version is very stable as software and libraries in it go through rigorous testing. This stability makes Debian a perfect server OS. And it's also the same reason why average user shy away from using Debian as their primary OS on desktop. This is also one of the reasons why many developers use Debian as a base for their derivative, one of which is also Ubuntu. Now that we are aware of each distribution's unique features, let's take a look at how we can go ahead and install these operating systems and where we can get their downloadable images. When it comes to Ubuntu, Ubuntu has dropped the support for 32-bit systems. Currently, it supports only 64-bit devices and ARM devices. Installation is easy with the Calamaris framework coming into ISO pre-default and the latest ISO can be downloaded from the link being shown on the screen right now. In the case of Debian, the support for multiple range of devices is still present. That can also include 32-bit systems and other smaller devices which are not modern. Even though it does not use the Calamaris installer, even downloading the ISO file can be a bit hectic for newer users. Considering this is a distribution aimed at developers and intermediate users, finding the right link can be difficult because of which we have mentioned the link on the screen below where we can get the latest ISO depending on which desktop environment you choose to go with. With the installation out of the way, let's take a direct comparison of the features between both Ubuntu and Debian. Debian is a community-driven open-source Linux distribution and is primarily aimed to be robust, capable, and most importantly, free. On the other hand, Ubuntu is also and free and open-source like Debian, but it's backed up and developed by a canonical, which is a corporate company. Debian and Ubuntu are both fundamentally fast regarding performance. As Debian comes bare minimum and is not bundled or pre-packed with additional software and features, it makes it super fast and lightweight at least when compared with Ubuntu directly. Both Ubuntu and Debian use the same APT software packaging management system but provide a different software repository. Debian is more like promoting freedom of choosing free software, thus it does not include any proprietary software by default. You can always install the paid versions but you have to enable it manually. Ubuntu focuses on usability, including all the software, including free, paid, open source, closed source, etc. Ubuntu also introduced a universal package management system called Snap. It will be used across distros and thus prevent more distro-based software fragmentations. As the Debian distro does not contain any proprietary blobs, there might be some problems with drivers and firmware. That means Debian lacks some of the essential proprietary firmware by default but the users can enable the repository and install it manually like other paid software. On the other hand, Ubuntu does not care how much whether it's paid, free, open source or clone source, so it includes as many drivers and firmware as possible. Ubuntu also lets you install and configure the necessary drivers and firmware automatically during installation or afterward. If you are a gamer, then you will probably be concerned with the latest software, drivers and hardware support. While Debian can potentially provide that, it is likely that you might end up breaking your installation. As mentioned before, Ubuntu supports certain proprietary packages as well, which often consist of graphic drivers, which are essential to gaming. Debian focuses on the open source aspect of the software. Hence, it can be a well-known fact that with gamers, Ubuntu and some other distributions like Pop! OS have been working much better regarding both software and hardware support. Regarding the audience they cater to, both Ubuntu and Debian have their pros and cons. Ubuntu is a very good distribution for amateur users with little to no experience and if they want to have the latest versions of packages and applications at all times on their systems. It is also for users who do not want a lot of customizability in spite of Unity being a very customized desktop environment. It is also perfect for users with newer hardware since it comes updated with all the latest graphical devices and their respective drivers. Debian on the other hand is catered towards a little bit of experienced users who can fix some minor bugs on their own or with minimal community support. It also is for users who want to support an open source approach rather than an operating system which is devoid of any contribution from other end and is primarily backed by a corporation.
It also doesn't favor gaming since it does not guarantee compatibility with all the newest graphic cards or even Wi-Fi cards in some cases. However, due to the low memory overhead, Debian is very useful for people who are looking to run home servers or even corporate environments where running servers on Debian will provide much more use. Hope you learned something new today. If you have any doubts regarding the topic, please let us know your queries in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.